Keywords everywhere. A premium plugin tool that everybody seems to be using at the moment. But are you using it correctly and can you save money? I've got some top tips how you can save money using keywords everywhere. Let's get into this. Okay, so first of all, for those of you who are not familiar with Keywords Everywhere, what is it? Well, Keywords Everywhere is a premium extension tool that can help you find keywords and also show you the search volume for these keywords. It also has a few other little tricks, like it can show you trends within Google, and it can also give you some ideas and some a bit of inspiration to actually find some relevant keywords or topics for you to write for your blog. So before we get into this, let's see where you can actually install the extension. It is a premium extension. It does offer some free functionality, but the majority of us will be paying for some of the premium features that it has, which will include showing you search volume for keywords. So first of all, let's head over to Keywords Everywhere and see how to install it. So you can see on the screen here, I've just typed in keywordseverywhere.com. So here we are on their homepage and you can see that it's available to install on Chrome as an extension and it's also available on Firefox. But the majority of people probably will be installing on Chrome. So the first thing you're going to want to do is add it to your Chrome uh, extension tool. So first thing we do is click add to Chrome. So once you've added the extension to your uh, toolbar, you click the little icon in the top right hand corner. So then you need to get the API key. So we click this little uh, menu icon that says get API key. Then all you'll need to do is simply add your email, tick the relevant boxes to say you agree with their terms and conditions, sign up their email letter if you wish, and then click email me the API key. You'll then receive an email. Now this email can often take five to 10 minutes, so don't panic if you don't instantly get a reply. But once you do get the uh, email and you are gonna want to check your spam box, mine did drop into the spam box, go to your emails, find the email from Keywords Everywhere, and in there there's a little link that says um, activate your API key here. So once you've entered your email address, you will eventually get an email which will have a little link in it here. Please click here to access your API key. Once you click this, you're taken over to the Keywords Everywhere API key where you simply copy the API key and then you want to head over back to the little extension uh, in your toolbar, click that and in there it'll say settings. Click settings and it'll ask you in the top left hand box to enter your API key. So you simply paste your API key in there and then you click validate. And then as you can see here, it'll say there that the API key is now validated. And then you're all set, you're good to go. Now, what I'm gonna do is show you some of the functionality of uh, Keywords Everywhere and how it can be relevant for you to find low competition keywords and uh, search volumes and trending uh, keywords or topics within the SERP index. Then I'm gonna come back to this page here because I have a few tips and tricks for you. So you're gonna to wanna to stay with me through this video for a few more minutes and then I'll get back here and we'll show you how to save some credits uh, using e keywords everywhere. So let's have a look at what this tool can actually do. Okay, so I've picked a, a little topic that my um, children have been doing at the minute, which is stone painting. I don't know if you know about it. It's a little trending thing that's going around. So let's have a look at stone painting and see what that comes up with. So as you can see here in the top left hand corner, it's saying that the search volume at the minute is 49,500. It also tells us the CPC um, cost. So that's the cost per click, something I'm not really uh, into. That's for paid advertising. So it's not really relevant for us. And also the competition here is not competition for keywords. So don't get that mistaken. Again, it's for competition for paid advertising. So I don't really worry about that. Using this tool, I simply use it for the search volume primarily. But then if you have a look on the right hand side and uh, these widgets is where uh, I think you get the most benefit from keywords everywhere. And there's a little tool here that's not often used, but 
it is where some of the pros and cons comes into it. So let's have a look first of all. So the first widget bar, you've got the um, trending data. And as you can see here, stone painting is starting to come into a, a little bit of a trend. So um, it may actually be a, a niche for you there, uh, stone painting website. Um, you can see here it's you know at an average search volume of around 36,000 per month. And it's peaking now 71,000. 48,000, 60,000. So it seems to be on a little bit of an upward trend. But if you have a look here, you can see related keywords. So these are keywords that people have been searching on Google that are related to stone painting. So stone painting for kids stone painting images, stone painting techniques, etc. And then you can see the search volume. So stone painting ideas has a monthly search volume of 14,800. And you can see here from the little uh, chart here, it shows you the trends. So you can see that in October 2019, 5,400 people were searching that. Uh, but then in May 2020, it's now up to 33,000 per month. And currently, uh, September, we're now in October 2020, but the last bit of data there, September 2020, stone painting ideas, we're still getting 18,100 searches. So still a popular search term. And then as you look down, you can see people also search for these um, keywords here. So stone painting for kids, rock painting ideas. So stone painting and rock painting, Google will pick up that that's a similar kind of topic. Um, large rock painting ideas, animal rock painting ideas. So you, you can see where um, the tool is used and see how it's used to find uh, inspirational ideas. So every time the program or the tool uses an API request to find a keyword, it is going to use a credit. Now, if you look here, 92,350 credits. So if we now search something else, so I've clicked easy stone painting designs and you can see that that now has gone down. So it reduces your credits every time it pulls an API request in. Now, this is where the pros and cons come in. So first of all, what's the pros of using this? So it shows you the search volume, which will give you an indication of how popular that keyword is. Although it is a premium tool, it also has some free functionality on it. It's a great tool to use for finding inspiration. If you've come to a bit of a roadblock on certain keywords, it can give you that insight into finding some new keywords or topics that may be relevant to your niche and that you should be going after. And it's a very inexpensive tool. There's no yearly subscription. There's no direct debits. You just pay for the credits when and if you need them. So if money's a little bit tight one month, then you don't have to use the tool. If your credits run out, you don't have to top them up. You're not forced or you're not uh, uh, obliged to pay monthly. You just buy the credits whenever you want. And, and I've done it. When I first started, there were some months where I just... I couldn't afford $10. I didn't want to pay $10. So I just didn't use it. And I looked and used other methods like the Google alphabet search method. But like I say, they're not going to show you the search volume. So what's one of the cons on it? Well, the cons are these widgets. Uh, if you look at these widgets, every time you pull a search in and you have these widgets open, you are using a credit. Uh, so if you can see here, so we've typed in easy stone painting designs. So you're thinking, okay, I'm using one credit. You're not. You're actually using credits for all these keywords here and all these keywords here. So just that one search has possibly cost me about 30 or 40 credits. Now, one of the other cons with this is forgetting to turn the tool off. If you look in the top right corner, you can see here that you can turn keywords everywhere on and off. And if you leave this on, which I do all the time, it drives me mad, and you're not researching for keywords, maybe you're just searching the internet or you know, maybe you're shopping or you're just watching YouTube videos, every time you're typing anything into Google or any of the browsing platforms you might be using, you're going to be calling on the API and it's going to be requesting that data and it will be charging you and you will be losing credits. So you have to remember to turn that off when not in use. Okay, so one of the tools that's really underused and that's this little tool here that says find long tail keywords. Now, if we just have a look at my credits now, so we've got 
91,457. So if you remember that number now, you can see how that will be affected now. So what I'll do is if I click this, what it's gonna do, it's gonna instantly search for stone painting. And it brings up a tool that's very similar. I don't know if you've seen Keyword Shitter at all. It's an, a weird name, I know. But it's another tool that can actually, you type in a seed keyword, and it goes off and it pulls in hundreds and hundreds of relevant searches and topics or phrases. Uh, that's relevant to stone painting. So if we click this, you can see that the program instantly starts to go into the search. And you can see it's rapidly going up. So we're already at 150 long tail keywords it's found, 200 keywords it's found, almost up to 300 keywords it's found. So I'm just gonna stop it there. And you can see it's found 314 long tail keywords around a search term rock painting. Now that's, 18% complete. So if we click continue, you can see it goes again. It's now up to 22, 23%. Let's click it again. And you can see here that it's now found 429 keywords, which sounds amazing. So let's have a look. So you've got ladybird rock painting. That sounds good. Designs for rock painting. Great. The type of pens you can use for painting on rocks. And that has 4,400 searches, so that's great. So it's found a ton of keywords and it's given me lots of inspiration, a lot of ideas. Uh, Christmas rock painting, there's another one, look, that's a good one. Gets 1,300 searches now. Imagine what that's gonna get in December. So as you can see, and if you look at the bottom, it's found nine pages of these ideas. So if I click nine pages, you can see here, uh, <laughs> vegetable rock painted. Uh, I've no idea. Uh, as you can see, there is some a lot of ideas and it's only 25% complete. Now, what you need to be careful is, remember that number of credits I had, 91,457? If we click this here, you can now see here that performing that one search has now cost me almost 400, well, over 400 credits. So I'm now down to 91,028 credits. So for a search here that may be relevant, it may be not relevant, because don't forget a lot of these keywords are not gonna be globally targeted to your search. It may not be actually in your search, because it might not be buyer intent, or it might not be informational. You may be going after one or the other, uh, and it might not actually be relevant at all. So it will find some really weird ones. So as you can see here, rock painting for Volkswagen bus. It's nothing to do with rock painting for children, but that's cost me a credit. So it's a great tool, but it can cost you a lot of money. But there is a way around it. So if you've been waiting for that uh, tip that I'm gonna give you to save money on keywords everywhere, here it is. If you look in the settings, now most people, including myself, I'm guilty of this, I did not go to the settings when I purchased keywords everywhere. Now, if you've got keywords everywhere, but you've not looked at these settings, comment below, let me know, did you go into the settings? Did you even look at them? I know I didn't. I know I just initially purchased keywords everywhere. I put on some credits and I just started searching. I took no notice of the settings, but this is where you can save a lot of money. So if we click settings, you can see here, you're back to where you initially validated um, the tool with your API key. Now you have some settings here that can dramatically improve the search data you get and also dramatically reduce the number of credits that you're gonna use. So country, so the minute you can see here, it's automatically by default set at global. Now the majority of my traffic comes to the US. So I only want to be searching really relevant uh, searches from the USA. You can see at the minute it's pulling searches in, in from uh, India and Australia and New Zealand. So if you set that to United States, you're only going to get the data that's relevant to the United States. That one simple function is going to really narrow down and target your keyword results and the traffic volume results much more accurately for you. The second thing you can do uh, is really just to smooth and streamline it is because if you're not using paid traffic, you don't really wanna see the CPC data or the competition because that's only relevant if you're using paid traffic. So I would disable those by simply unchecking these boxes here. And I just want to see the search volume and I do want to see the trend. I want to see the uh, the trending pattern of that keyword. So leave them there. But then you can streamline the search even further by just using supported websites. So where do you want it to pull that information from? Do you want it to pull obviously from Google Search, Google Search Console, 
Bing. But then do you want to see the search volume from Amazon, eBay, Este, Google Analytics? So there's a few of these on here that I don't really want to see the search volume for because if I look at the search volume coming from YouTube, then it may not be a relevant term because somebody could be typing in um, rock painting videos on YouTube. So I am going to be paying a credit for that search, but it's not relevant for me because I want to see people who are searching for rock painting within Google. So I'll uncheck a few of these and it'll improve it again. So let's get rid of um, that one, Amazon, uh, Majestic, eBay, Este. Um, I'm going to keep uh, get rid of Google Analytics and I'm going to get rid of YouTube and YouTube tags get rid of that one and get rid of that one. So I'm just going to keep the main search uh, volume. So I'm going to mainly keep Google search, Bing search, Yahoo search, uh, answer the public, DuckDuckGo, a few of those. So then once you've selected your supported websites, you can also go to your miscellaneous settings here where you can switch off some of those widgets. So these widgets that we saw here on the right hand side, you can switch those off. So you can see here, like the Google trending YouTube chart, you can switch that on and off. Uh, and there's various boxes that you can switch off. And this will be relevant for these widgets that show up on the right hand side. So again, you can streamline it. But simply by selecting the country and se selecting the supported websites, you've now really narrowed down the amount of credits that you will use every time you do a search. You will also improve the search quality and the data that's coming through. So when we go back here, stone painting for kids, if we refresh that, we are now narrowing down this search to just the relevant country and also the relevant search data, where, i.e. where it pulls that data from. And that way we're getting the best information possible. Okay, so there you go. A little tip for using keywords everywhere. A little tip that might save you some credits and a little bit of money. It is a very inexpensive tool and it's one that I do personally use. Like I say in the video, I would take the search volume. I, I, I'd take it with a pinch of salt. It's not always accurate and I certainly don't go or live or die by the search volume that these plugins and even other tools uh, tell you. Uh, I go off a lot of instinct and a lot of research and a lot of background data to, to decide if I should actually go for one of these keywords or these topics. So don't rely on what you see 100% but it's certainly a good and inexpensive tool that can help you uh, find some new keywords or some new topics to write about. And with that tip hopefully it'll save you a few credits because as we know every little penny counts and every penny you can save is more content you can produce for your website. So I hope you found that helpful. If you're new to the channel, please do subscribe and click that little bell icon. A lot of you are subscribing, but not all of you are clicking that bell icon and you're missing out on some great videos. So thanks for joining me and I'll see you in the next one.